I grew up in uh, Cambria Heights, Queens, the largest actually um, African American middle class population in the nation. But what most people didn't understand was crack started to penetrate every fabric of society. So the movie Scarface, when I left out of that movie theater, I took on a new dream, and that dream was I wanted to be a drug lord. And I saw that movie at age uh, 11. So I walked with that dream in my heart, and when I went to school, one of my friends had stolen some drugs from his brother, offered me the drugs. I didn't even believe it was drugs. So, so I gave him $3, and I took the little thing. I thought he was just fooling me. And then a half an hour to 45 minutes later, I felt the power of that drug and I didn't like it. I didn't want to use it. So then I said, well, could I help you sell it? And that's what opened the gateway. And then I realized the big money was in crack cocaine. And then I started to seek out who were the largest drug dealers, who were the biggest that I could work for to learn how to run and set up an operation. 16 is when I started to f officially become my own boss. And I started going up to people like, yo, you're going to work for me, yo, we're going to do this, yo, yo, you need to come on my team. And I just started to build a little team and people didn't try me for a long time. And then the cops, you know, eventually set me up. So just so anybody's watching, there are good cops, but every police officer and every human has sin. We are all sinners. So cops were tired of me they wanted me off the streets so they planted drugs on me and they locked me up they were like he's a dealer we know that we couldn't bust them but we're going to illegally arrest him and that's what they did went to rikers island for a year got out and um and then uh dived into the drug world uh, again and then eventually um my parole officer handcuffed me because I turned in some dirty urine because I was cooking up the drugs like the TV show Breaking Bad. The cocaine was going into my pores. And then um, I, I, I escaped. I mean, when she handcuffed me, I slipped the cuffs to the front. And when she came back in the room, I jetted on her and was chased and escaped from 50, 60 cops looking for me. Had to dress like a woman to get through a checkpoint and made it down to North Carolina. It's a wild story. I was down south and we were in a terrible drug war. And it was just one of these very sober moments. I just thought of all my friends that started to sell drugs with me and how many of them were killed. And when I got to 30 names, I just started crying. And it was just sitting there shaking. And I just started to say, man, this is just, this is just crazy. These three women offered to pray for me, and when they prayed for me, I just felt this overwhelming power knock me to the floor. And they were praying the evil out of my heart. And I felt this evil force that was driving me for years. I mean, it was so unnatural. I would go to neighborhoods to find a good looking girl. I wanted a businesswoman. I wanted her smart, pretty, but she had to be like a businesswoman. And then I would date her and then corrupt her and bring her into the operation so that we could have a more organized <laughs> operation. I mean, that's what I looked for. And when that force, you know, was prayed out of me, I mean, I remember I stood up and just was like, wow, I didn't know that evil was driving me. You know, I, I had no clue. And I just turned up to God and I just said, God, I said, I'm done. I said, I'll never sell crack again. I said, I'll just sell marijuana because it's natural, God. And then I was confused and went into the marijuana business and uh, even made more money uh, than the crack because I was selling, you know, these large quantities. And, uh, and then, thank God, a youth pastor got a hold of me at the church I was going to and began to teach me that, that that was wrong. And then after that is when I decided, you know, from reading the Word of God that I had to obey the laws of the land. I had to turn myself in. 
it was scary, but I'm an all-in kind of person. And I also, too, I just think I was, I wanted to obey God, you know, and for men doing seven years, you know, that that's, was the sentence for escaping in New York. You know, at the time you automatically got, you know, seven years. So I just said, you know what? I'll, I'll do ministry in jails, but at least I'll be right with God. My mother um, saw me get back into school. She saw me finish college. She saw me get my master's. She saw my life completely turn around and meet my wife, having kids. Uh, and then with my mother, she uh, died of cancer and um, she stayed in my house. So I was able to serve my mother and be with her when she breathed her last breath. What do I stand for? I stand for righteousness and, uh, and for peace in this world. And I think that that ultimately comes through the grace and love of Jesus Christ and people finding out that God has a son that he sent into this world to make all wrongs right. And I would just want to be one of his soldiers on the battlefield.